Greetings once again, dungeon dwellers, creeps, ghouls, and mutants all alike. I am, as always, your host, the one and only Dungeon Master Dave, bringing you another episode of Spooktober. Tonight, we talk about In a Violent Nature 2024. This movie was written and directed by writer director Chris Nash. We only have the one MVP for this movie for actor Rye Barrett. For playing Johnny. But we do have one of our first subgenre awards. This time, we give it the Slasher Award for bringing an old classic trope to modern times. <laughs> So, what does this movie entail, you might ask? Well, this movie is basically a one -er, as if Aaron Sorkin himself decided to film Jason Voorhees as he went on a tear across Crystal Lake. Ah, but the rules on this one are a little different. This time, don't touch Johnny's necklace. But you know how that song and dance goes. Aw, oh, shit. Of course, they're gonna put their grubby little greasy, grimy hands on it, aren't they? Now you all gotta die. And I've always had a question. Why don't towns like Crystal Lake and this place just put up signs that say why you shouldn't touch it? And where you shouldn't go? You know, that might make this whole ordeal a little easier. You know, I think some other places have done that and seen it be a little successful. And what group of kids hear the stories of White Pines? And hear about the massacre? And still decides, you know what? I want to go see that place. I still want to go find whatever's there. Ah, but you just couldn't leave without taking a souvenir, could you? Gotta have a little trinket. And I swear, this monster could be Jason's cousin. He could very easily be. From right down in the New Jersey swamp. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Jason's from New Jersey. <laughs> yeah, it's Bayonne. It's the toxins. Ah... Uh... And speaking of Jason, I gotta say, Johnny waking up in the woods behind Chuck's house just off the highway has got to be some sort of experience. <laughs> Johnny has a memory while he's out on his tear of why the necklace is so important to him, and I would say they were better off never touching it. But Chuck and his shotgun just had to ruin that Kodak moment, didn't they? Ah, <laughs> oh, but we know how that goes. Shotguns don't work out here. And I gotta say, for those of you who are like me 
and like it a little bit brutal if it's going to be brutal or not if it's not. This first kill is a little tame, but the levels of brutal will steadily climb and climb and climb. So enjoy the first one if you're a bit squeamish, because <laughs> it's only really going to get worse from here. Ah, <sighs> you should have took care of where you were stepping, Chuck. Aw, oh, I guess we know why the sheriff was yelling at you. <laughs> I guess we can see why he was mad. Got caught in one of your own traps, Chuck. And Johnny does find another necklace. And it's a necklace, but not the necklace. So Johnny has to turn on his ESP GPS locator for his necklace. Luckily, it happens to drive right by, so he doesn't really need that. <laughs> After five minutes of listening to these kids, though, shoot the shit and shoot guns and tell the story of how little Johnny became Johnny, the zombie buried in the woods I gotta say I wanted to go jump in the car and give Johnny a ride <laughs> just to get their murders over with I wanted to go drop him off just to get on with it and get rid of their fucking annoying asses <sighs> and of course the kids have to take a group photo with the killer and, of course, no one's going to notice right then. That's, we're just going to do the old tropes, aren't we? <laughs> and I would suggest you keep your eyes on Johnny as he moves about the movie. It does get a little harder to spot him as it goes on. This movie requires you watch the periphery at all times, whether it be in kills or in watching Johnny. Unlike the teenagers who don't seem to be able to pay attention to anything but whether they've got a blunt or a bottle in their mouth. <laughs> then we have death number two. Ah. <laughs> Aaron dies trying to smoke a bowl and take a shit. You could say Johnny, or you could say uh, Aaron... Never saw it coming. <laughs> ah, and we are graced with more Johnny POV goodness. Tromping and... Tr ah, however many T words you want to say for him. Traipsing and trolloping along in the fields that are just pretty to look at. <laughs> Johnny goes to the old fire tower and conservation station <laughs> and finds all his dad's old gear there, still in almost mint condition, hanging on the wall. At last, Johnny has his gear and is complete to go off and get his necklace and a little bit of revenge. Ah, and we are given a long one -er shot for Johnny as he walks across the lake while you're just sitting on the edge of your seat waiting for it to happen. Now I can understand some of you may be like, Dave, this was so boring, but you gotta think about it. Jason would have never... Kill number three, get drowned. Followed quickly by kill number four. Johnny helps Aurora do her yoga in front of a majestic mountainside view. How else was she going to see? Her form was so bad if Johnny didn't physically show her. 
<laughs> she really got a good hook, twist, and snap in the end, though. <laughs> My one complaint, though. Johnny doesn't have what you or I would call social graces or events, so this movie is rather slow. This probably is the slowest movie I'll bring you this year, but I would say it's still worth watching and as much as I've heard complaints about it as much as I've heard people going oh will it get on with it it's not unlike your cousin Jason your favorite ah uh, but I do hear them because I swear this movie has more shots of Johnny walking somewhere than Lord of the Rings Fellowship of the Ring non extended edition don't get don't get get it twisted it ain't that bad ah uh, and Johnny goes for a long pass and finds himself a little toy car and a set of car keys attached to it. <laughs> and I gotta say, this was a touching, soft moment with our Johnny boy, where we finally get to see that cute little face of his. <laughs> Followed by a double kill. Kills five and six. Johnny shows us just how smart he really is by using bait and distraction, while the two boys show us they're so dumb, they have rocks for brains. <laughs> By Troy and Evan. Asshole Troy gave Chris the necklace, though. Too bad for them, this could have all been over, and she could have been saved more trouble. And you know it's bad, 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 when the police know what you did when you show up, and they can't do anything for you. You done fucked up, kids. <laughs> way to get the only guy that could have stopped Johnny in any kind of way, shape, or form who had done it at all killed because, ah, I can't mm, dumbasses kill number seven <sighs> poor sheriff would have had him too if it wasn't for those meddling kids. Sheriff ends up with quite a bit more hacked off than he would have enjoyed. And quite a splitting headache. Meanwhile, the kids try their hand at a favorite game. Don't be suspicious, don't be suspicious, don't be suspicious, don't be suspicious, listening by him, he can't see us, we're not making tons of sounds. Ah, uh, don't be the... <coughs> Immediately gets killed. <laughs> Oh, and I don't blame her. I don't blame the girl at all. Go on, honey, leave the necklace and run. Woo-hoo-hoo! -hoo. Go on, honey, leave the necklace and run. <laughs> and I would say this was probably the most terrifying night and camping trip of Chris's life. <laughs> whether you believe she survives it or not. That, I think, brings us to the moral of this kind of short and simple story, which is 
put a damn sign on this place with big bold letters that says absolutely do not touch Johnny's necklace. Anyone entering this graveyard without a purpose will be arrested as a matter of public safety and welfare for malicious mischief and stupidity with intent to do harm. It's an easy fix. I don't see how this should have even been a movie, but without the idiocy of a bunch of teenagers, we wouldn't have had even that. I gotta say, this movie, what it has going for it is some rather inventive kills, some rather picturesque locations, and a killer that, while he doesn't say much, deserves to be within the new age of killers and I would argue has a has another function that is more important he brought slashers back to us now I know I know Johnny isn't Jason he's some sort of Timu wish version he's a knockoff at best but he's a knockoff for a new generation who for all purposes, hasn't seen Jason in a decade, who may not know the masked killer in the woods. And I gotta say, if this is all you have as an entrance to slasher in the woods horror, camping horror as you were, as you would, this is a decent gateway. I, oh, I've i seen some people go as low as 7 on this film, giving it a C round of a, a middling. I, I think that's, that's underselling it a bit. You see, you're getting something for the first time, and you're so spoiled that you don't even know it. You're getting... A one from the killer's perspective. As if Aaron Sorkin himself came back and was like, Let me follow the killer this time. No, no, don't let me follow Mr. President. Not the news anchor extraordinaire. Oh, no, 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 no. Let me follow the killer. Let me show you what he's doing in the background. And I get it. It's not glamorous. Not pretty. It's not even fun. It's walking. It's work. Because how else are they going to get from point A to point B? Unless your killer has magic teleportation powers, or in some ways doesn't need to travel to get to their villains or victims. Looking at you, Freddy. I know it's rich, coming from me, but your powers are bullshit. And we all know it. Just saying, you don't have to travel to get to your villains or God, victims, victims. I gotta get that right one day. You don't have to travel. They show up in the dream and you just get them until the whole convoluted angle where you can't get off Elm Street out of Springwood. So anyways, let's all forget Freddy's dead for a minute. Let's not get off into that territory. I want to say this movie deserves a watch. And given you can watch it for free and it just came out this year on Shudder, it's worth a watch. And if you've got AMC, they're showing it apparently during Fright Fest. So find a time when it's on and just put it in front of your eyes. Yes, it's slower. Yes, it's is it's not Jason because it's not he shows up and it's scary and rah 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 and yeet 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 and it's not ki 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 ma 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 but it is true to that experience. It is real and honest to that experience of the killers in the woods and he's coming for you and you don't know where. And you don't know when, but he's going to show up. And there isn't going to be some sizzle music. There isn't going to be some some stinger noise. You're just going to get stabbed. And you're not going to know why. 
And I think for a movie to have created a story without needing to explain down to the 10th generation how this thing got started and at the same time create a killer and a monster that had very clear rules that obeyed those rules at the same time mimicking another monster that we all know and wish we could have one more go at I know I miss my time on the lakes and my first chances to see Jason. I was young. (laughs) Far, far, far too young. But that's a story that I've already told you once before. Anyways, I hope you give this movie a shot. It's the one that I've heard people giving the most hard time to. And it's the one that I've had a lot of fun with so far. But that's all the time I have for this evening, Creep Schools, Weirdos, Mutants, and Monsters, one and all, my family. (laughs) I hope to see you next to our next bonfire, but until then, night-night, sleep tight. And don't let me bite. Sweet dreams. <laughs>